Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we've got four more uh, nice early hardbacks that I'd like to get popped into a nice uh, Myler acrylic sort of dust wrapper protection here. Now th these books have all uh, got their original dust wrappers and I do want to get them protected. Um, so the last video did raise a few questions. People wanted to see a few more examples of different sorts of books being popped into uh, dust wrapper protection. So I'm more than happy to oblige. So that's what we're going to do today. So I've got these four nice books and I guess, well, which one should we start with first? Well, I guess the we do the first two Dick Francis books first of all, because I believe they're actually the easiest because they're not actually that badly damaged. Um, so we'll do Dick Francis's first book, and this is The Sport of Queens. Fantastic autobiography and it was Francis's first sort of step into the world of writing. After this he became a, uh, a columnist, uh, I forget which paper he wrote for on a quite a regular basis, I think it was the Daily Express, until he then started penning his own crime thrillers in the world of horse racing and that's what made him fantastically famous. Um, so this particular rapper, although it's been cut. It's not in the worst of shape and because it's the author's first book it is one of those ones that's usually quite sought after. So um, what we'll do, we're going to get some get some miler laid out so we can get an idea of how much we actually need to cut off. Put the dust wrapper in there and if I use the book itself as a bit of a paperweight like so that way we can quite easily see because we don't want too much loose loose miler so I think that's about perfect so if I make a little cut up to about the edge here that should be fine to get that first dust wrapper sorted. So I don't want too much at the end here. It should be about fine. So I try and use nice sharp scissors if I can. These ones have got a really good blade on them. Well it wasn't the neatest of cuts but it will probably be okay. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is fold the first bit over, which is going to be this one. So I think I might leave the books there just while we do this first fold. So what I've done in the past, I use this ruler because that, because these bits here are quite, they're already chipped. I don't want that to be any worse, do I? So by popping the ruler over it like so, it protects it and gives me a bit of a, a guide. And what I do, I just initially do a fold on it, not super pushing down, just enough to get a crease in. Then I will take the ruler out and I shall it down with a bit more force. Just do half at a time. There we go. So that's at that edge. Turn it all the way around, we'll pop the books back there to keep them weighted down, but we want to make sure this is the actual dust wrapper is up to the edge there where we've just sort of creased it, creased the miler that is, and there we are, so it's perfectly in position. And 
and use the other books as uh, paperweights again. Yeah, and that, so that top edge, the, bus, the dust wrapper is right up to the edge of where we've just folded it. And this time we want to do the same on this side. Once again, we're using the ruler to cover up the, uh, the chipped edge. Now I was very lucky in that I got these Dick Francis books. I, it took a bit of patience, but patience paid off and I was able to get these at a very reasonable price. Um, it wasn't that long ago that the British Book and Magazine Collector had this first autobiography as, you know, upwards of £100. And then Dead Cert was four figures in a dust wrapper. Nerve there was, once again, it was a few hundred pounds in a dust wrapper. And I didn't pay anything like that because that is a bit over the top. Um, but because Dick Francis is no longer writing anymore, potentially some of his fans have dropped off. Maybe the collectors have possibly lost interest because there isn't new books coming out. Then again, authors get revivals. Ian Fleming has become more popular as the years roll on, hasn't he? And his books are fantastically valuable. So there we are. So now what we're going to do, we'll take the dust wrapper out and we'll literally just fold it over. So the dimensions should be absolutely perfect for this one like so. So we've got the initial uh, home for it. Now we don't want too much spare plastic either end. So we do want to fold the plastic in, but we don't want to go, we don't want loads of it because there needs to be room under the cover for it. So I move it angle it sort of that way we can sort of see what's going on so that looks okay you can sort of see my wonky cutting there unfortunately but the main thing we want to do is have it right up against the edge of the book jacket there so there it is just lightly with my ruler And I go in for a second go with my finger, like so, to really flatten it. Now, once the books have gone, once the, the dust jackets are back on the books, um, they do require a bit of time to sort of bed in, as it were. So do allow for that. Don't expect them to just look perfect straight away. Sometimes you need the, uh, the books to be sat with some weights on for a couple of weeks or even longer, just to really take hold. The thicker the book, it seems, the longer they take to actually settle. But once you've done it, they, they are great. And uh, ones that I did recently now look fantastic because I've left them under a nice pile of books to really uh, get any sign of sort of air out and also get the, uh, the plastic to sort of, the folds to settle in as it were. But when you see if you've been collecting books for a while, you come across books, you even buy them off dealers and they've been put in this horrible, horrible wrap, which uh, you think, why would anyone put a book in something like that? It just spoils it more than anything. But, you know, people do. So there we are. So. Now it comes to popping the actual book back in. Now I've actually cleaned the book itself already. So we have to see how well, how well we've done. This is the, the tough bit because we have to get all the sort of air out of the book to stop the dust wrapper 
rippling and that's why it's good to get it spot on as best you can and then to leave it under some weights but there we are that's that's the first one pretty much done now and doesn't that look better than what it did obviously the book jacket wasn't meant to begin with but it's certainly uh tidied that one right up hasn't it and yeah it just needs a bit of uh just needs a little bit of time now under a nice big stack of books and that one will be uh looking great so i think we might as well crack on and do nerve so this was dick francis's second work of fiction it's a lovely lovely first edition um, now this was one of those ones which actually had um, an amateur dust wrapper on and I removed it in my last sort of cleaning video. Uh, someone had actually put some sellotape up there, but in actual fact, although once again it's been a, the dust wrapper has been clipped, it's a very, very presentable copy of what is his second uh, work of fiction. Very, very scarce and uh, I got it for an absolute bargain price. So. That's all I care about. But yeah, alas, um, someone, you know, in antiquity, 30, 40 years ago, put some tape on just to stop those two bits of, those two corners getting any worse. But I think, you know, the actual dust wrapper itself is really distinctive, isn't it? It's a really nice one. And uh, yeah, designed by Trevor Denning, it says here. I think that one's gonna really pop once it's popped into a, uh, a miler sleeve. So without further ado then, let's, and roll a bit more of this sleeve. Pop the Nerve Dust Wrapper in, like so. I'll use the actual original book to give it just a, an inch that side. And we'll use one we've got coming up later, which is Jules Verne, a very early Jules Verne. And that looks about perfect for where we need to cut. And I shall try and cut in a slightly straighter line this time with a bit of luck. <laughs> Here we go then. But it doesn't really matter if you don't do it dead straight. The dust wrapper police are not gonna come around and arrest you. And I certainly won't mind. Suffice to say, you're giving it the best possible protection that you can bar you know, outside of a, a museum. Okay, so exactly the same principle again. So we'll start with this bottom edge. And because it is such a quite short book, um, the fold on these is gonna be quite, um, quite large, but there really isn't any way around it. It is what it is. It's quite a small dust wrapper. The books get bigger as time goes on. So I shall just use the ruler again as a little guide to stop me over creasing it. There we are. This wrap in actual fact, will do books up to A4 size. I had a very nice Doctor Who Dalek omnibus that I'd had as a kid in the 70s. And I found one with a particularly nice dust wrapper. I mean, miles better than the one I used to have. And I, uh, I was able to pop it in a uh, Milo sleeve and it came up, because it was black and it was mint, it came up absolutely spanking. I was really, really impressed with how well the Milo wrap sort of brought out the colors on it. And that's what this, this does. It, it really brings out, as well as protecting books, it brings out their, uh, their colors as well. This one sadly has got a bit of a faded spine. It's not perfect by any means, but as I said, it's a three, 400 pound book ordinarily, and I didn't pay even a 10th of that. So I was particularly pleased to get this one in a wrapper. So. Same principle again there. So sometimes with these, I know I can understand people being a little bit nervous about putting their dust wrappers into a, a sleeve such as this and maybe uh, damaging them, but you really can't. As long as you take, you know, you're, you're reasonably sensible and you don't make any sort of rash moves, you should be absolutely fine. 
and the final effect is excellent sir and the more of these you do the better you become at it so that even something like well we've got two like this one here but that one the second century of humor from the 30s which is really fragile as a dust wrapper even that doesn't fill me with dread anymore whereas before it might have because it is in such a sorry old state you know so there we are so that's that one in so we're going to flip the dust wrapper around now to do the the last part which will be the edges it's looking good but we want the edges to be as equal as possible so just move it along just a tiny touch there and i'll still use these to weight the book down because it's so easy for it the dust wrapper to go astray and we definitely don't want that to happen there we are nice tight crease there if we hold that one down we'll flip it round so that we can do the other edge nice and flat obviously don't you know use a hard surface like I am um, you wouldn't want to be doing this on a spongy surface if you could help it because you just won't get the accuracy that you're going to need to do something like this. There we are. So now all we need to do is get the book put back into its wrapper. So as I said, it was a very nice copy of Nerve, so I was very pleased to get this one. And I am slowly putting together a set of the Dick Francis books, but I'm trying to find really nice editions, and I do want all the early ones in dust wrappers. Now, unfortunately, Dead Cert in its original dust wrapper is a four figure book and I don't happen to have four figures lying around <laughs> um, and I would just wouldn't pay that for a first edition anyway um, but you can I have been able to find the book in first edition but without a dust wrapper so I've picked that one up and then I'm going to just order a facsimile dust wrapper for it and when I get that one I shall of course um, show you the process that I use to get it put into a nice nice Myla dust wrap and really set the book off perfectly. So there is Nerve and you can see it's got this spring in it and that's simply because of the the Myla's yet to set. It needs to go dead flat which it will and then the air will pop out. But already you can see that's it's really really nice that it's going to look great on the shelf even with that bit of tape removal there. That's a real Real nice addition that it just needs some weight on it to keep it in situ and then it'll it'll pop out it'll be lovely absolutely lovely i think we'll do the jules verne next this is definitely the oldest book that we've got to do today this one uh, dates from the late 1920s it was published by wardlock and this is part of their prize library which you may or may not have heard of i mean it's not alas a jules verne first edition because it would be in the hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Um, it is, however, a nice edition that I quite like. Um, and uh, it's just one that I do like Jules Verne as an author. So even without a dust wrapper, this one actually looks really nice on the shelf. As I said, it's one of my favorite stories. 
but the fact that this one did come in a vintage wrapper made me think well I might as well wrap it up while I'm here. And as you can see it's severely foxed and there's chips and well it's a pretty it's in a pretty sorry state isn't it let's be honest but if I could just manage to get it in a miler it's certainly going to stop it I would hope getting any worse because in actual fact it is a it's a very nice wrapper that one um, it's a real shame that the uh, the diver on the side here has sort of yellowed um, this was number 24 in the prize library and there they're numbered up to number 39 I have got another one on the way which was uh, Ben Hur and that's like numbered in the 50s so um, so I'm not sure how many prize library books were actually published I can't find a definitive list there may not even be one in existence but um, certainly they're nice additions to read and they're relatively cheap considering they're almost a hundred years old now so let us get pop that up just up there let's get some miler rolled out and see so again it's not a particularly tall book this one it's about the same sort of height as um, as nerve so we're getting in the center as best as possible so that looks about right for there with about an inch at the end that should be enough to just do the fold and then I don't really want to use the second century of horror so I've got a copy of this penguin biography here so I'll pop that one there just to keep the book in place the dust wrapper rather in place then I'm gonna once again cut up the edge here First bit we'll do will be this bottom edge. As you can see, it's super, super rough, this one, which is why, if anything, we're doing the book a favor by wrapping it because it is just going to keep it from getting any worse. At least that's the theory. Um, so by putting my ruler over it like that, it is sort of cutting, it's, it's putting a line in front of it there to stop it getting any worse while I play around with it here. So let's fold over. See if we can get that first sort of line. Actually, that's not too bad because the inside dust flaps are have been protected, of course, so they're actually in slightly better shape than the outsides here. But there's no obvious place <laughs> to hold on to, so you've got to sort of, you know, trust yourself a little bit there. So I'm pulling from the middle and creasing to the outside there from the middle to the out there we are so that's got that one done now i need to turn the whole thing around and it has sadly moved there a little bit which is a shame while i'm there i'm just uh, unfolding another little little line there a little crease as I said, you're not going to get this perfect because it's just too old. So I've got no aspirations about keeping it mint in any means, but just by doing this, it's making it more protected. So. Have you ever read 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Because it's a great, great novel. I had a... Uh, when I was growing up, I had a really nice Jules Verne omnibus, which had five Jules Verne books in. I've not been able to find that particular omnibus again, and I've looked long and hard, but the ones I've found don't seem to be the one that I read as a, as a kid. It was when I was at school, it was part of the school library, so who knows how long it had been there. Um, but that was when I first read this fantastic book and got introduced to the works of... Uh, Jules Verne and I have loved him ever since and that's possibly why I like to be called Jules. 
So there we are, that's the top and bottom of what is a decidedly rough wrapper. And then we're going to do the uh, end flaps now. Or well, we do need to turn it over, of course, so that's the next step. So it should be the perfect size for us. There we are. As I said, this is not a mega collectible by any means. They only go for about, even in a wrapper, 10 to 15 pounds this. So it's not a lot of money we're talking here. But we are, I believe, doing the book a service by, uh, by at least trying to protect its wrapper. Because it is, you know, best part of almost 100 years old now, almost. So it's survived this long. I'm hoping it will last a, a few more decades in my library. I'll fold over this corner now. There we are. I do need to flip it all the way around to do the other one. Like so. And I do find the ruler useful as a guide initially, and then I'll go in and do the, uh, the proper fold with my fingers. There we are. Right. There we are. This is the way it goes around. Now, this book was particularly tricky to do because it was slightly, ever so slightly, bowed, as you can see. So it needs. Not only does it need to be pressed, it needs to be sort of put back into that position. But that's something that's going to happen once I've got this wrapper on and I can do both jobs at once. Let's just get the air out again. And there we are. That's actually come up extremely nice, that one. It needs a good pressing down, which I'm going to do, and I'm going to square the boards. But just look how that has come up. It's absolutely lovely, isn't it? Actually, uh, really does enhance what is perhaps in you know, a very, very um, old copy of that book. So uh, there we are. So just the one left to go now. Right then, so the last one we've got is the uh, second century of humor. Now these were published by Hutchinson in 1935 to 1937. This is one of the tail end ones. So it's a 1937 one. And they're particularly rare in dust wrapper because the first thing it says when you uh, buy the book is take off this wrapper now. <laughs> and the reason why is because you could order other books in the series. This had a sort of a tail away uh, order form. So they, would, they were encouraging you to, and one on this side, they were encouraging you to actually cut your dust wrapper up. So consequently, finding copies of these in dust wrappers is particularly difficult. Um, however, um, on the series, this is the only, I've, there's 26 volumes, I believe, in the series, and this is the only one I've got that I've been able to find in a dust wrapper. That was a, a, at least affordable. <laughs> I've seen some with absolutely crazy sort of three-figure prices on, you know, three, four hundred pounds, and uh, I certainly wouldn't be paying that sort of money for it. So once again, we'll use the same principle as before. We'll get some Mylar wrap. Getting through a bit of this today. <laughs> um, and then we'll roll that one out. We'll put, this is a much, much, this is the biggest dust wrapper we've done today, um, but still exactly the same principle. So we get it up towards the end there, sort of in the middle, like so. That looks good. Keep it as, keep it as uh, 
flat as possible. Um, there's lots of this dust wrapper is particularly notorious for breaking and being stressed. So I am being super careful with it. Um, but I'm just happy to have this one in a dust wrapper if it, if it most of the series that I've got, as I said, I've got about 20 out of the 26 now. Uh, this is the only one that I've got in a dust wrapper. And they're all like short story anthologies. And um, they actually look really good in, uh, even without a dust wrapper, but on the shelf. Because they've got like a little black sort of black and white illustration on the side there. Um, they come in different coloured cloths as well, which also makes them interesting. And uh, I'm a real lover of a short story. And that's what these are full of, basically. Short stories or extracts from other works. I was reading one of these recently. It was the A Century of Boys stories. And there was a short story, or it was an extract by H.G. Wells. And it was about these giant ants. Or not giant ants, no, it was ants that had taken over like a pirate ship. And uh, another ship had approached it and every and they sent someone on board and the guy was instantly like overcome with these sort of horrible ants. I thought, wow, we that's really, it was really dark actually. And I was surprised at sort of the level of adult horror that was sort of included in what was apparently a book for boys. <laughs> it was a really, really good little extract that. But I don't know which which HG Wells it came from, but it was a good one. So that's the first edge. That's all gone so far so good. Do the second edge now. Exactly the same principle. We we'll use the plastic to cover up the uh, the rough edges, and the ruler is my initial guide, like so. Slip the ruler out and uh, go for it. And don't worry if you're a millimetre or two out on these because the books do need a bit of room to breathe. So, As I said, it's not an exact science. This is just my way of putting this, this dust wrapper wrap on. And I, yeah, it's worked for me. My books, I think, look great on the shelf once they've been done. And like you see them now, um, they're having a really good sort of pressing. And that is what they're going to need just over the next sort of few weeks, just to really put the plastic in its place. The Mylar wrap plastic in its place. And there we are, so let's pop it round now as best we possibly can. Now it says there's over a thousand pages in each of these books, but in actual fact, they're not all a thousand pages. Some of them are actually a little bit less than that, depending on the subject. If you've never looked into this Century Of series from the 1930s, they're really, really good. And generally speaking, they're not a fortune. Now, I've got that too far down, so it needs to be up about there. There we are. And if you are enjoying these sort of how-to book videos, do please leave a comment below and tell me that you are. I know the views are there. People seem to be enjoying watching them, but um, it's always nice to get feedback from people who watch these videos, just to say that you're getting a lot out of them because I hope all the years that I was a book dealer and that, you know, all the years I've been a book collector, I hope I have picked up a few little handy hints that I can pass on to my uh, my viewers and I very much uh, appreciate you watching my videos over this last sort of year and a half almost a year and a half I've been doing it now on YouTube and certainly the channel's been going from strength to strength so do thank you very much for that 
there we are right then so let's get this wrapper on at least this way we know exactly the way it's supposed to go like so big old term isn't it let's get the air out again takes a little bit of time just to get it flat and to make sure all the creases are in exactly the right spot and that the spine's on correctly. This one's just taking a little bit of centering to get it spot on. When you think you've just about got it, then it's ready just to be sort of pressed on now with a big pile of with a big pile of books. So there we go. Um, okay, so I just wanted to show you uh, after a day has passed since I filmed the video where I was popping uh, dust wrappers, these dust wrappers into the sleeves, just what they look like now that they've had a bit more time. They've been, they've been pressed, basically, they've had a weight on them and the books have basically sorted themselves out. Well, all, all bar one of them in actual fact. So this is looking much, much uh, flatter now, as you can see, um, absolutely fine. Uh, the dust wrapping is, is protected and uh, you can see that the air is sort of blown out of it so it's looking all right um, if we look at 20,000 leagues under the sea that was another one that big thick book and that was really sort of puffy with air and after having um, a day with a nice amount of weight on it's actually looking really really great and it's really uh, sort of improved the look of that hardback immensely and I don't feel when I'm picking it up now, I don't feel like there's bits of it gonna, gonna fall off in my hands. Uh, the same can be said for uh, this one here, the second century of humor. So once again, this is only after one day, don't forget. But once again, it, it feels like the, 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 wrap, the wrap has really sort of taken shape and is, uh, is in just about in, in as good as a position as we could possibly hope for. Um, this one however it still hasn't so there's a little bit if you the book sort of springs open a little bit you can see and that's simply down to the fold inside here so that's going to take a little bit of time for that to go down but suffice to say the dust wrapper itself is beautifully protected and it just needs to be sat on for a few more days um, generally speaking when i put the books into wrappers like this i leave it for about uh well at least a week sometimes a couple of weeks and after that they're absolutely fine and uh they're ready to sort of be slipped in in the correct way so there you go i just thought you might like to see this after uh the process has been done and the books are looking um, a little bit better there we go um so i hope you have enjoyed today's dust wrapper video <laughs> um, certainly one which uh, you know as I said I think um, the books look fantastic once they've been done and uh, I like to do all my uh, first edition hardbacks in a similar sort of manner um, if you have enjoyed today's video do please give it a thumbs up do please consider subscribing for regular book related videos lots on the channel and there's lots more still to come Thanks for watching today. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.